All right, guys, today we're going to check out the National Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, this is at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. So if you want to see what they got in here, stick around. Starting off, they've got a replica of the Wright Brothers' first aircraft. This is actual fabric from that aircraft. I've seen a uh, smaller piece of fabric at the Smithsonian, but that's a pretty large section there. Here they've got a display talking about all the early years and the tragedy. Uh, first airplane accident, first airplane fatality. Here they've got pieces of some of the, the plane. And here they've got wing ribs. This is a fragment of the propeller blade that broke during the fateful flight that killed the first person uh, ever to die in an airplane accident. This hangar is absolutely huge. Got all kinds of aircraft hanging. Pretty interesting. This is a cross that was fashioned by the Germans and put at the grave of Roosevelt's youngest son when he was shot down in 1918 behind German lines. You can see here, this is an original postcard that the uh, Germans printed to show the body of Roosevelt's son lying by his crashed airplane. <laughs> Pretty wild. Got some really interesting old planes. Now we're getting into World War II. Bombay doors. This twisted piece of steel uh, is a bomb casing. Uh, back in 1944, some guys were unloading bombs and one of them accidentally detonated, setting off 1,200 tons of bombs. And uh, they said the blast could be heard for 40 miles away. There's a shoe sole embedded in that bomb casing, which is believed to be from one of the men that was killed. I believe there was five men killed in the ensuing blast. This is the F-22 Raptor. This is the current brand of fighter jet. And when I was in the Air Force, we used to have F-15s. F-15 has never been shot down in combat. But I was at a training base down in Florida called Tyndall Air Force Base. And they trained pilots how to fly the F-15s. Well, when they first came up with this new F-22 Raptor, they, um, they got one of them and brought it to the base and they decided to test it out, so they put it up against five F-15s, and they gave each F-15 five lives apiece and sent them out over the Gulf of Mexico. And they sent this jet, F-22 Raptor, 
out after those F-15s. Now this is a stealth plane. <clears throat> and this thing went out and killed every single one of those F-15s all five times and they never saw it once. Not on radar, not visually. I take that back, they did see it one time. The guy spotted it with his eyes and locked onto it and fired a missile. But when they went back and reviewed the data, they found out that the F-22 Raptor had shot him down and killed him long before he ever saw it. Now, I was an ammo guy, so I messed with things like missiles. This right here is an AIM-9. They call it the Sidewinder. And this is one of the, the missiles I messed with quite often. <clears throat> Yellow band on the missile means high explosive. And uh, a blue band would be inert, meaning it has no explosives. These uh, heads are argon cooled. You can see a little compartment right there. That compartment <clears throat> would house an argon ball, like container, that would go up in there. And it super cools the head. And that way it can track heat signatures uh, much better. It also, uh, as it gets closer and closer to the jet, if the jet starts to pull away from the missile, the missile will go ahead and detonate uh, to hopefully do some damage before you know, the jet gets away from it. Pretty interesting plane. This jet here is also a stealth aircraft. And uh, you can pause if you want to read it. But I'm sure you can imagine if you were out and about seeing this thing flying in the air, you'd probably think there was a UFO. <laughs> Definitely looks sci-fi. Here's another angle of that aircraft. Just below it is the F-22. Doing a virtual reality for the kids. Space. And we're going into a 360 simulator. You have to actually fly it with the joysticks and shoot down enemy aircraft that spins all the way around. Okay, the top screen is what they're seeing. Bottom screen is a camera view of them inside the capsule. They have the Air Force chopper made by OCC. So when I was in the Air Force, this was one of the bombs that uh, we messed with a lot. I never worked on aircraft, I was a munitions guy, so I dealt with these all the time. Yellow is high explosive. This is a Mark 84 bomb body. And this configuration with that uh, center harness, the tail fin, and the guidance device on the front here makes it a GBU-31. Look at this breakdown of this plane. Every space has something that does something. It's amazing, 1901, first flight, and this here was, what, a World War II aircraft? By the 60s, 
50s and 60s, things have progressed to an unbelievable point. We was walking on the moon. Started out with sticks and cloth, ended up with something like this. There's a Mark VI nuclear weapon. That's a big boy. Boy, was I wrong. This thermonuclear device is a big boy. Mark 17 thermonuclear bomb. Good grief, that thing's huge. This is a pretty neat display. This is a piece of the Berlin Wall. When I was in the Air Force, these were the fighter jets that were uh, before the F-15s, which are the ones I was familiar with. They used these as target practice. Uh, since they were out of date and they didn't use them anymore, they, um, they would hook these up to remote control, fly them out over the Gulf of Mexico, and pilots that were learning to fly the F-15 would be sent out to uh, dogfight and, and destroy the aircraft. They had a, a plethora of these that they, they couldn't do anything else with, so why not use them as target practice? This is an F-15. This is what I worked with when I was in the Air Force. After they retired these, the F-22 became the predominant fighter jet in the Air Force now. But this is what I worked with daily. Uh, now I never worked on the plane. I was a munitions guy. So I worked with things like this here. This is the gun that's mounted inside. The, uh, the rounds you can see right there. This drum holds all the rounds. This big thing here is a fuel tank. And the rails up there is where they could mount missiles and whatnot. Up underneath, I don't think you can see from here, but there's compartments where they put chaff and flare, which are countermeasures, to uh, shoot off if they're being fired at. I always dealt with that. I was always uh, delivering those and counting the expenditures when they'd come back from training missions. That's the F-15. This is another weapon that I was familiar with. <clears throat> this is a GBU-24. That's the configuration of the bomb. I've got a video somewhere of me um, testing the head on that thing. They had a whole control unit that you would hook this up to and uh, test it. And then we've also, they also would install these fins. This is a Bluey 109 bomb. Uh, it's called a bunker buster. And uh, this thing will go down through reinforced concrete like you wouldn't believe. This was called a Bluey 82, also known as a daisy cutter. It had the fuse on the end of a long stick and what would end up happening is they'd slide it out of a aircraft and there'd be a parachute on the back the parachute would pull it out and then it would drift down you know and just kind of fall down used it uh, a lot in vietnam i believe uh, to clear canopies and, and uh, runways and things this is a fuse in the end of it see there it's got like a little spinny <coughs> spinning blade. You could calculate that fuse if you knew the altitude you were dropping it and as it fell that blade would spin and they knew how many rotations a blade would make 
from what altitude they were dropping it at so they could calculate it uh, to perfectly detonate right before it hits the ground basically and this would go off with such a huge explosion it would clear any vegetation or or anything along the ground and then they would be able to uh, you know possibly land a helicopter or whatever they had to do and here is the warthog the A-10 had this massive 20 millimeter gun on the front and uh, it only ever fired out of one hole uh, which I believe was this hole right here. So as the gun rotated, every time a barrel would come to that position, it would fire because that is right down the center of the aircraft. If it fired out of this hole over here, when it, when it would fire, the plane would pull to the side. Same thing over here, it would pull to the side. So by firing out of that one hole, everything stayed nice and centered, allowing the, the A-10 to fly nice and straight. This is the gun outside the plane. That's what's mounted inside the aircraft, along with this big drum holding all the ammunition. set of magnetic boots. Mercury spacesuit. This is the Apollo 15 command module. charring from the high heat. That's a really cool plane. Satellite riding on the tip of a rocket. I heard somewhere here on Wright-Patterson that they had a UFO hidden in a hangar. That's crazy. If you want to pause and read. It doesn't look like it got off the ground very far. That's pretty wild. So this aircraft flew President Eisenhower. Oh, inside the jet. Boy, it is tight quarters in here now. This is different than what I thought it would be. I thought it would be like spacious, like a P-3. Yeah, it's far from spacious. Of course, everything's glassed off. A little bit of a kitchen here. Imagine that uh, President Eisenhower might have used a bathroom right there. Or slept in these very uncomfortable, thin little pad bunks. Nice places to sit back here. This is my 
might have been the president's private quarters. So that back there might have been the bathroom he used. <laughs> There is the old Air Force One. Okay, this aircraft here, Air Force One, carried eight U.S. presidents. President Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Bush Sr., and Clinton. All road on this Air Force One. Inside Air Force One. There's the cockpit. With every button you could ever imagine. Kitchen area. It's not a very wide plane. We got a bench all the way down through here. This must have been the president's quarters. Imagine all the presidents sat in that chair. That's pretty wild. President's guests probably sat here. A lot of history. <laughs> this sign says that this area here was President Kennedy's conference room. After his death, President Kennedy's Vice President Johnson was sworn in in this area. Somewhere right in here. In the background, you can see that poster right there. Mm -hmm. There's the poster. Oh, nice. That's pretty wild. Johnson was sworn in right here. Huh. All kinds of seating. Like they had the old phones by each one. Yeah. Another kitchen back here in the back. Someone's Laboratory there. and exit. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the Air Force Museum, Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Lots to see and do here. You got four hangars, stuff plumb full of aircraft, uh, everything from the beginnings of um, airplanes to Air Force One and space in between. So, uh, lots of cement floors, hard on your feet but uh, well worth the visit. It's free to the public, and I suggest you come check it out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.